Hey guys, what's up? Today I'm going to be showing you how to uh, make a really basic logo in Photoshop uh, relatively quickly. It's, it's, it's a pretty quick process if you uh, follow the steps I have here. So first step is I want you guys to uh, go to a website called The Noun Project. I think it is, what is it? Yeah, thenounproject.com. This is a website where if you sign up um, for free, you can download pre-done little icons that you can use in your logo kind of makes things just go by a lot quicker so you don't have to do this stuff from scratch I use it all the time so go ahead and create an account there I think you'll have to basically um, do the free membership and I think you'll get like a, an email that you have to confirm to start your account but uh, once you're in um, basically it's it's really easy to search for things um, you just go up to the the search bar up top where is it now? oh just right here <laughs> a little bit lower and you can search for something. So if I want, uh, you know, a dollar sign, let's see what comes up. So we've got all these different ones right here. So basically, if I want to make a logo, um, I click on this. I click on uh, download. And just so you know the difference is, if you're using Adobe Illustrator, you'll want to do this SVG. Just to kind of explain, Illustrator is good for if you ever want to make resize a logo and make it very, very big or very, very small. Adobe Illustrator is the way to go. If you know that your logo is going to stay just at a certain size, like a pretty small one, and not be stretched out that big, you don't need that, and PNG would be fine. Today we're doing, we're going to focus on Photoshop, so I'm going to do a PNG. And um, right here you can just click on free and give credit. And now if I click this little arrow right here, show in folder, and sometimes this will be automatically in Photoshop, but it looks like mine's not, so I can right click on it and click on open with and find Photoshop. If it's not here, you can always click on this as well to go find it under other programs. But Photoshop, click OK. So now I've got this open. It's good to give credit. So um, you know, if you're if you're feeling great, just you know, obviously leave leave this stuff down here. But uh, you can also just go to crop and crop this to the size that you want. And then if you select all this, you can also um, uh, make it move it around with this arrow tool. Or if you want to actually make it smaller in size, you hold Control and T. So hold Control, press T, and now you can resize it. Keep in mind when you're resizing, if you go just down or sideways, it'll scrunch it and make it look weird. And it might mess up these arrows. But if while you're resizing an image, if you hold the shift button, it'll keep the proportions that it had originally so it doesn't start to look strange. So I'm going to make this one smaller, bring it back up here. And now what I want to do is I want to make a circle around this to make a logo, right? And so the next step is double click on this layer right here. So double click that, click OK. And next step is to go over to the shapes area and let's see I'm looking for right here the square if I go and click that and hold the click I can go to rounded or to ellipse tool so click and hold the click go to ellipse tool and same thing look if I drag this out to make a circle I can make it skinny or, or wide but I want it to be a perfect circle so I'm gonna hit escape by the way if you ever make a one that you want to get out of you just press escape or control Z control Z is the undo button and it basically goes back a step you can also do edit <laughs> step backwards which is again it's it's not just control z but it's actually control alt z is to go backwards or undo so i want to make a circle and to make a perfect circle just like i was telling you before if you hold the shift key while dragging out this new circle look it it'll make it a perfect circle it's awesome and so once you get it the size you want you do that click back on this arrow to kind of move it and re reposition it and see how i'm kind of going above here I need to make it even smaller so once again control T hold control press T and I can resize this now keep in mind that whatever one you have whatever layer you have selected here that's the one that you're gonna resize when you do control T so if I had this one selected oh and by the way I can't do anything right here because I've got to hit enter to confirm what I just did but if I wanted to change this layer I would do control T there and now I can adjust this Notice also how this circle is in front of my, my original icon, and I don't want that. 
all you have to do, thankfully, is a couple things. You can either right click and do a, a step uh, move forward. But the way I do it is I just go to these layers and I just drag on them and push this one above it. So basically, if I just drag this up above, there it goes. Now it's above there. Again, you can also double click here. And sometimes you'll see the uh, bring to the front or bring to the back. But typically just drag them in the order you want them to be. The, the ones at the top are going to be the ones that are most visible. So I've got this circle right here. I want to double click it to select it. I'm going to, once I double click, I'm going to pick a different color just to kind of get it going. But there's a couple ways to choose colors. If I want to do it like this, that's fine. Then I click OK. The next step is to right click on this, uh, this layer right here and go to blending options. This, these are the options that are going to really make it where I make it look like a button and not just a circle with a little icon on it. So usually the ones I go to is I, I check this bevel and emboss and you can see it adds a little bit of a 3D effect to the edges of the circle. But if I want to make this a little bigger and a little more obvious, I can increase the depth and I can increase the size. See how it makes it go in? So I kind of want it like right there to make it look like a 3D button. And, um, and in the depth, you can see the effect that that has. It makes it either more extreme or less. So I'm going to say about like that. And you can mess around with all these different options here. Don't Feel free to, to experiment. And uh, also contour. You can see the difference that contour adds to it. So that's something you can add as well. Texture is, is only if you want. It does give it, a, you know, obviously a pretty obvious texture. But a lot of times you won't want that for a button. But you can do it to kind of make it almost look kind of gritty like it's a, a, something made of real materials. And of course you can you know, change a lot of the options here about how you do that texture. But for now I'm gonna keep mine, actually that looks pretty cool right there. I'm gonna keep that on. Actually I'm gonna take it off for now, but it's up to you. Next thing is to go to, um, that I usually mess with, you can mess with all these, but the one I, I usually check to is this uh, gradient overlay. And you can see that applies a gradient over what I had. And Usually what I do is I go to style and I change this to radial. So it's almost like a circle gradient. Radi you know, radial means circle. So click radial. You can see it kind of is more of a circle now. But I don't want it to look like that. I want the opposite. So I can click check on reverse. And you can see how it kind of puts it out there. Also to mess with the gradient and change the different colors that's in it instead of black and white. I can double click on this. And I can double click on my colors here to change them. So if I want to change that to red, let's, let's try it. Let's do like a blue. It's more of a purple. Kind of a blue there. And if you want it to not be white, you could change it to something else. But I kind of like mine as white. So, um, and again, if you wanted to change it, you would just double click it right here and change your color. So once you're done messing with the gradient, oops, I didn't save that. Let's go back into it real quick. Double click, blue and then OK to save those changes. Another thing too is notice with this gradient overlay, it, it totally got rid of that red color we had chosen. It, it basically overrides it. But if you don't want to override it, if you want it to kind of just blend a little bit more, you can move this down. See how that's now blending the red with this blue? Now if I go all the way to the left, it's going to be invisible, the gradient that I just put on. But if I kind of go to the right, I can kind of mix up these colors to kind of give me a, a slightly red effect on there, which is kind of cool. So basically, now that you've got that, again, you can mess with all these other, other uh, settings, but I just kind of wanted to show you how to make a quick and easy little button. And once you've saved this, and again, go to the crop tool to really make sure that these edges are, are matching. And once they are, hit enter. And now I want to save this for uh, the web, which means I could use it on a website as a button link. And uh, to do that, I would go to File, Save for Web and make sure that this PNG 24 is selected right here and really make sure that this transparency is selected that's very important that means that when you put it on a website it won't have a big white square around it it'll it'll be transparent or invisible so once you've got that set also make sure to set your image size if it's gonna be a really big image or a big logo on the website you may want to make this bigger there's never any harm with making your image too big and then just you know resizing it in in the website to make it smaller the worst, though, is if you make it too small and then you try to stretch it out later, it'll look all pixelated and, and terrible. And again, this is the, the, the problem with using Photoshop as opposed to Adobe Illustrator, which 
allows you to resize to any size later on without making it look different in quality. So once you've got this selected, um, select save, and you guys know the drill. Just save it, whatever you want to call it. Um, and now this is a logo you could technically use in a website. And usually if you use the, the image add tool on most websites like in Weebly, you can also add a link to that image. So that's how I make my, my links on the LHS website. You can see right here, I've got all these button links. All these buttons I made in Photoshop with that super quick and easy method right there. So uh, good luck making icons, guys, and uh, get at it. Later.